Hello and welcome to the lecture series on applied thermodynamics. In today's lecture, we are going to continue our discussion on reciprocating air compressor. We will take up a derivation on work done related to multi-stage air compressor followed by a numerical towards the end. To begin with, we will consider a two-stage reciprocating air compressor. It has a two cylinders and the first cylinder is called as a first stage or low pressure cylinder. The second piston cylinder assembly is called as second stage or high pressure cylinder. In between these two stages we have an intercooler. It is a component which works on the principle of heat exchanger. So the purpose of this intercooler is to uh, bring the temperature T2 equal to that of T1 by extracting the heat so if that happens if t2 becomes equal to t1 then the cooling is called as a perfect cooling or perfect intercooler in other words <coughs> now let us move ahead considering the pv diagram so we see a pv diagram here and uh, we have two cylinders the one enclosed area corresponds to low pressure cylinder the other enclosed area corresponds to high pressure cylinder and the processes from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 and 4 to 1 this signifies the cycle for low pressure cylinder and the process from 5 to 6 and 6 to 7 7 to 8 and 8 to 5 signifies th the cycle for the high pressure cylinder further we can also see that the process from 1 to 2 and 2 to 9 signifies a continuous compression process just in case if one cylinder, cylinder is employed for compression process and the process from 2 to 9 9 to 6 and 6 to 5 and back to 2 this signifies the amount of work that can be saved by adopting an intercooler in between the two cylinders thereby we see that uh, by adopting an intercooler we are approaching an isothermal compression process which gives us minimum work input for the given compressor now uh, the typical temperatures towards the end of compression at each stage that can be worked out depending on the isentropic relation as shown here so T2 by T1 corresponds to the first stage cylinder similarly if it is a T6 by T5 then this corresponds to the compression process for a high pressure cylinder or stage 2 now moving further we now calculate the total work input that has gone onto the compressor which is a sum of the work input by the low pressure cylinder and the work input by the high pressure cylinder we have a straightforward relationship which we have developed earlier we can plug in these equations straightforward into this uh, work done and we get the equation of this kind further one can replace pressure with the volume change with reference to MRT that is based on ideal gas equation we have PV is equal to MRT earlier we have studied free air delivery concept so based on that one can relate using a property relation PA VA by RTA is equal to P1 into change in the volume divided by R into T1 this is representing a stage 1 similarly one can extend that for the stage 2 as well where we have intermediate pressure P2 further the T2 which is corresponding to stage 2 can be written as T1 this is because we are using intercooler therefore the temperature remains constant there so therefore we have T1 and T1 further plugging in these into the above equation we are going to get the following form and then taking the common factors outside that is n by n minus 1 MRT then one can add the pressure ratios and then minus 1 minus 1 becomes minus 2 therefore we have the final equation in terms of power input so we are expressing here the mass of air in terms of mass flow rate of air 
therefore kilojoule per cycle has now become kilowatts therefore please note that this is no longer just a work input this is rate of work input therefore we have w dot now let us look at the heat rejected per stage of compression when we look at the two stage air compressor arrangement there are two places at which heat is rejected one uh, during the compression process the other one is in the intercooler so we have two heat components here therefore the total heat at stage one can write as heat that is rejected by compression plus heat that is rejected during the cooling process one can use uh, m c p d t relationship to compute uh, this uh, heat transfer therefore we have for q compression that is a heat that is rejected during compression process as m c n into d t where c n is a polytropic specific heat which is given by the relation here and it has a unit kilo joule per kg kelvin therefore uh, one can plug in this c n into the above equation similarly for cooling heat rejected during cooling process one can write mass flow rate of air into cp into change in the temperature now one can use cp by cv is equal to gamma relation and further they can modify the cn relation as shown here therefore cn takes the final form gamma minus n into cv divided by n minus 1 and then we have the final equation by plugging in the heat transfer due to compression process plus heat transfer due to cooling process then we get heat that is rejected per stage as shown here now moving on further uh, trying to look at the work done and we want the work to be minimal in multi-stage compression for that we have uh, one has to find out the intermediate optimum pressure that is p2 so to do that one of the condition that has to be followed is shown here the d by uh, d of uh, indicated power to that of d into p2 is equal to zero this has to be subjected to d0 so this gives us the minimum compression work for the given compressor multi-stage compressor therefore uh, solving this uh, equation with this approach we arrive at an optimum intermediate pressure p2 given as square root of p1 multiplied by p3 which is basically a pressure ratio at each stage at stage number one we have p2 by p1 and at stage two we have p3 by p2 when we equate both this one can find out p2 is equal to one can find out p2 is equal to p1 square root of p1 multiplied by p3 now moving on further with this for two stage reciprocating air compressor one can find out the minimum work input through this equation please note the pressure ratio here we have p3 by p1 and 2 is the number of stages involved and extending this for a z stages that means number of stages more than two then the equation takes the following form where we have z in the above case for a two stage compressor z was two therefore we have a z here as two two plus one becomes three for a two stage compressor and similarly here also z into n where z becomes two so one can use this following equation to find out the minimum amount of power input that has gone when we have multi-stage compressor in place now with this background we will now proceed in calculating uh, the uh, total work done considering one of the problem having a multi-stage compressor so here we have a problem calculate the power input to compress 25 meter cube per minute atmospheric air to 101.3 kilopascal 20 degree celsius to a pressure ratio of 7 in a low pressure cylinder air is then cooled at constant pressure to 25 degree celsius in an intercooler before 
entering uh, high pressure cylinder where air is again compressed to a pressure ratio of 6 so we see that uh, the pressure ratio in stage 1 and pressure ratio in stage 2 both are given to us and atmospheric pressure and temperature is given to us we are asked to assume a polytropic compression process and n polytropic index is given to us that is 1.3 that is du applicable during compression as well as during the expansion and uh, you, uh, the characteristic gas constant R value is given for air uh, that is 0.287 kilojoule per kg Kelvin and they asked us to neglect the clearance volume therefore there is no expansion process that we need to work out now let us list the given data so we have a given data here in place it is a two stage compressor and we have volume flow rate given to us and atmospheric pressure is given to us these are the inlet data and then we we uh, see the pressure ratios pertaining to stage 1 and the pressure ratios pertaining to stage 2 polytropic index value is given to us and they are asked to find out the indicated power total indicated power so for that since there are two stages given to us here two pressure ratios so we have total power input is equal to indicated power for low pressure compressor plus indicated power upper uh, high pressure cylinder we can use that equation as a governing equation and then proceed one by one so here we have a PV diagram for the given problem at uh, stage 1 we have the pressure ratio 7 and at stage 2 we have pressure ratio as 6 and the compression process is typically following a uh, polytropic law PV raised to 1.3 is equal to constant now let us write the governing equation total power input is equal to input power with reference to low pressure cylinder plus input power with reference to high pressure cylinder now we have a straightforward equation for input power for low pressure cylinder so we are expressing here pressure and the volumes in terms of MRT therefore uh, in order to compute indicated power for a low pressure cylinder one has to first calculate mass flow rate of air followed by temperature T2 mass flow rate of air can be calculated using an ideal gas equation so we have PV is equal to MRT rearrange this equation substitute the given data and one can work out mass flow rate of air in terms of kg per second or kg per minute basis and the other parameter that has to be worked out is temperature T2 and temperature T2 corresponds to the end of compression for a stage 1 therefore since the process that is followed here is uh, polytropic compression we can use polytropic uh, isentropic equation here and then we can substitute the value of T1 P2 by P1 and N as 1.3 and we can arrive at temperature T2 as shown here now with this uh, we can plug all these uh, the terms into the above equation and find out the in, uh, indicated power in case of low pressure cylinder and comes to 103.6 kilowatt now moving on to calculate indicated power for high pressure cylinder so we follow the same steps we will first calculate the temperature T4 and using isentropic relation uh, one can find out temperature T2 and followed by uh, substituting these into the standard equation for indicated power so one can find out IP of our uh, high pressure cylinder as 95.23 kilowatts so now the uh, problem has been simplified we have worked out indicated power for low pressure cylinder and indicated power for high pressure cylinder the sum of IP for low pressure cylinder and IP for high pressure cylinder will give us the total work input for the given compressor having two stage uh, two stages so with this we have now come to the end of today's lecture please refer to the following reading materials 
थैंक यू थैंक यू फॉर योर अटेंशन